Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to modify your sudo list so that you're able to run sudo commands in your Linux terminal. In this example, I will be using CentOS 7, so a little bit of the words might change if you're using another install of Linux. So say you're using Ubuntu or you're using Red Hat Linux. Um, you might have to tweak your process a little bit, but it's pretty much the same steps. So let's get started. The reason why you would want to update your sudo list or change it is if you want to be able to run sudo commands such as this, sudo, who am I? That just tells you what's your, who, which user you're logged in as. And it's going to ask you for your password. Once you type it in, it's going to prompt you that this user is not in the sudo file. And as a result, this will be reported. But since you're running on a local machine, this won't matter as much. But anywho, let's get started. So I'm just going to clear it out because I don't like having all that junk. And we're going to start with first, you would need to have access to your root account. Just as an FYI, if you pre-installed pre this using a virtual machine such as VMware, you were able to set up your password before. So it might even be the same one you used to log in. But by default, a lot of the times the root password is typically root, but spelled backwards. So it'd be Tor, so T-O-O-R. So let's get it started. First, you would switch into the root account by pressing SU, which is abbreviated for switch user. That's how I take it at least. Then you press that enter it's going to ask you for a password and just like we said before it's either root spelled backwards or the one you set up when you install the machine so once you log in you're going to be greeted into your root user the way you can tell is if it says root at localhost all right so anyways let's get a little bit more in depth since i'm trying to keep this video short for the sake of convenience there are two ways to do this at least in terms of what i think is the most practical way and you guys can you know, talk all about it, but these are the methods I think are the most straightforward and the most effective. There's an easy way and there's a complex way. Both will be good for any sort of situation. So the way you would want to do this is you have to learn a command called user mod. User mod just lets you modify permissions and group files. But the command that we're going to use in this example is user mod dash a for append. Typically think in abbreviations for all these letters. And you're going to put group, append a certain group. In CentOS, typically the pseudo group is called wheel. So then you're going to put wheel. And then you're going to put the name, the username of the person you're trying to give pseudo permissions for. So in this case, I'm going to put my username right here. And you're just going to be given another command to insert, which typically means the command went well. How to check for it? Here's a little trick. This is where you're going to use grep. Grep is kind of like filtering for certain words, and you'll be able to like find if this person is in the group or not. So let's go in. We will check by pressing grep. Then you're going to close it off with a word. So it's the single quotation mark, and you're going to put the group wheel, which is the pseudo list, the pseudo group name. In CentOS, it is wheel. You're going to close that off. Then you're going to find it in a certain group. So there's a certain file directory where all the groups are located. So you're just going to filter it out from there. In this case, it's etc forward slash etc forward slash group. Let me if I can spell it right. And there, so grep is going to filter for the word wheel. And it's going to tell you in this group who's in it. So right now, since I added my name, you could tell it's already here, August Kant. But say that you didn't trust me and you said, oh, well, you probably did it before. Well, let me show you. To remove a user, and this is if you actually want to remove someone when they don't, you don't like them anymore, you can do gpassword slash delete, and you're going to put the person's name, August Kant, and then you're going to put wheel, which is the group. And there, for some reason, this one tells you that they did remove it. And if you guys wanted to know if it was done, Go back to the command. I'm just using the arrow up key just to find it since I don't want to type it again. And you press it again and look at that, it's gone. So that is one way to add a person to the pseudo list. There is another way since we're already in this file, I'm going to show you. It's a little bit more involving text editors, but if you're pretty familiar with that, you should have no problem with this. So I'm just going to clear this junk out of the way and I'm just going to type the command by pseudo basically means you're going to open up the pseudo file in Vim. Once you're in Vim, I'm just going to stretch this out a bit so you guys can see a little better. But in this, you're going to see all this sort of text file. And the most, the reason why we had to use the vis by pseudo command is 
this file can only be edited with that. There are other tutorials on how to change it if you want to use a different one, such as nano, or just say vim sudo, but this is the straightforward way to get it. You're going to basically go all the way down. This lists just basically all different types of information. You can figure it out later, but we're just trying to update the sudo list so that you can run sudo commands. You're going to scroll all the way down. And just a tip, in CentOS, the group, as I said before, the sudo group is called wheel. In other Linux distributions, it might be different. So in this example, under this line, and just so you guys have a little bit more clarity, you can do set number, and it'll list you what line, just so I could you know, show you guys a little easier. But in line 109 or 106 in this example, this says allows people in group wheel to run all commands. That, all you got to do is sometimes it might have a, um, a hashtag in here, and that usually blocks out the command, so no person in that group. So it's basically disabling it. Just make sure it's actually activated in there, and you should be good to go. I just say that because sometimes people might actually add people to the group and may or may not have the group actually active, so just to keep that in mind. But say you just didn't want to actually deal with the whole group adding, you could just want to straight up add someone to the group to the root commands. You could actually do it from here as well from this file. So in Vim, in order to insert text, you're going to press the word I, and notice that it changes from, I originally put a set number, but now it says insert. So now I could actually type letters. So press enter, go up, and here you can actually add your username. So I'm going to add my username right here, Augustcon, and basically copy that same same uh, syntax you have with root. So you're just going to copy and paste it essentially. So you're going to put all equals und with parentheses all with that. If I just learn how to type right, and then I'm going to align it just for the sake of clarity, and afterwards. You should be offset. In order to exit out of Vim, the proper way at least, I would recommend you press escape. Then afterwards, you're going to press your colon or the two dots, and then you're going to put W U, which will save your file and quit the file at the same time. If you just wanted to save it so you wouldn't have to exit, you press W colon W, and right there it'll say it wrote it to this file. But say you just wanted to save it and quit, you press that W Q, and you're good to go. So now with that being said, let's go test it to see if we've done right. Since we have it added in two different versions, I'm 99% sure it should be added. So let's just exit out of the root. The way you do that is by switching user, or in this example, you could even straight up type exit. Exit puts you back into your host. Now we can actually try to type the word sudo. And who am I? It's going to ask me for my password. And what do you look at that? You can now use sudo commands. So thanks for watching. If you guys need more tutorials, just leave it in the comments. I'll be sure to research it because I'm also learning as well. And you guys have a good one. Bye.